Hey, Eric. Hi, Chris. Can I ask you an important personal question? Yes. What's with you and eating at the exact same time every day? Chris, I'm a man of schedule and organization. I, I understand that. Uh, yes, like that. yes. And I, when you, we had a little thing to do before the podcast today, and that was that interrupted dinner tummy time. Okay. And if I don't eat dinner, if I eat dinner too late, then I'm not going to sleep well. If I eat dinner too early, then the worst thing in the world can happen, which is I go home after this and I'm hungry again. Yeah. And I have to eat more before okay. I go to sleep. Then I won't be able to sleep then because I'll be like, after my like post feast haze where I'm just wandering about the land, trying to stargaze while I trip on uh, satiated hunger feelings. Yeah. Okay. So it has to do with how well you can sleep and, and organize your yes. life. Okay. Otherwise it'll induce anxiety. And I also have to eat a shitload of food because I burn a shitload of calories. Yeah. Right. Okay. So like organizing all that, like structure, like whenever we do a, like a, a Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving thing, like, all right, dinner's at three. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean dinner's at three? Yeah. I'm mm. going to get hungry again. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do dinner at three. No. I need structure and order. That is one thing. I Never do it at three. Never do it at three. Never do it at three. <laughs> yeah. I'll, like minimum five, like five I can handle, but. You want to hear some hot sounds? Yeah. All right. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast about classic Japanese role-playing games where we discuss them chapter by chapter, beat by beat. This is Season 4, Part 2. We're covering Suicoden 2, published by Konami. My name is Chris. I'm joined by Eric. Hello, Eric. Eric. Hey. Hey, Eric. Yes. Nice to see you. We're also joined by the RealNet, a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live. Thank you, RealNet, for your support. And if you also want to be a supporter of the podcast, you can go to patreon.com slash retroam, and in return, we'll give you, like, you know... Bonus episodes about video games you've never played before. Like Parasite Eve. Yes. We're also joined by the Fake Net, our post production AI companion and dateable mission operator in Inti Crates Love and Destroy. Initializing Fake Net. Did you ever see Neon Genesis Evangelion? So did the people who made Love and Destroy, and I would never be your girlfriend mother. Yes, I know it was an Evangelion ripoff, but it still plays fine. Thank hey, you. it's fine. Yeah, I mean. What it wasn't in 99, right? <sighs> I don't know. Everything's a Gundam ripoff. Everything. You Every, know, everything. Gundam was in the Transformers movie. Hmm? Some shredded Gundam parts when they're in jail on the Quintesson planet. There's like very clearly Gundam robot references and like the, the decaying. How did I not know that? I don't know. I know all about Gundam parts. Look at my fucking table over here. There's Gundams everywhere. Here's the thing about getting older is you probably knew that and then forgot it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. You want to talk about Sweet Coden too? Yeah, man. Yeah, some shit's talk about to about happen. Shit. So we are in the middle of the Matilda episode, right? And we are escorting Miklatov across the border because he wants to find out what the hell's going on over there in Muse. The worst reconnaissance mission of all time. Yeah, he's been outed like three or four times, yeah. right? Yeah. Byron, they're even like, yeah, we know, we don't care. Go yeah. ahead. Knights are not known for their stealth. So we approach Muse and there's silence. Well before we reach the city, it cuts to a screen of our party walking toward Muse outside on grass. Cloud shadows scroll to the top of the screen. Miklatov says Muse is up ahead. We gotta be careful. Then there's like some scraping ass sounds that roll in in waves. Yeah. Miklatov wonders what that is. Fade to black. You know what we get next? CG cutscene. Yes. A blue sky desaturates to gray over the city of Muse. There's a distortion in the light near the hilltop. And it slowly transitions to a dark magic whirlwind. Slivers of blue light rapidly ascend inside the whirlwind, almost being vacuumed up by the black hole in the sky. Hmm. The slices of light become so numerous that they turn the entire cloud blue. And that cloud morphs into a translucent electric blue howling wolf. The wolf splits in two. One remains howling while the other cranes its neck forward like that shirt. It dissipates after a few seconds, just as the camera zooms in on Muse. The sunny day is restored. It's like nothing ever happened. Fade to black. Holy shit, extremely dark magic is happening here. And like, we'll learn later, I think, all those blue slivers of light were souls yes. being vacuumed up. Some souls are actually being sucked here. Soul sucked. So, how did you feel about seeing a large double-headed spectral wolf here? What, I didn't think this was that kind of video game. Were you going to, did you think you were just going to see Highland occupants like killing Killing yeah, just doing civilians. more like yeah. like Luca making people pig walk again, yeah. more shit like that. I didn't know they were going to do some soul suck magic 
up here and like how quickly they got raptured. Yeah. Like that was like a 25 second rapture. Yeah. Like what the fuck are they doing? Like, is this to feed like some powerful rune God? Like, I don't understand the purpose of this other than raw sadism. It's interesting because I don't have any memory of this in this, in this scene in this game. You blocked it. Like, I somehow blocked it out. Like, I honestly did not know that we were going to see this giant wolf beast in the sky. I know what the, the, the wolf beast is. Like, I know, like, how the story plays out with that thing. But for some reason, in my memories, I thought that the wolf thing was something that was shoehorned in later in the game. Yeah, this just, it, it's, I don't want to call it a curveball because I'm sure it was building towards some of this with this stuff of like what's Luca's deal. Yeah. But it did seem like the game took a dramatic shift in tone right here. We're doing this political drama, this strategy, these battles, and then, oh, by the way, uh, this guy took all these vulnerable people or whoever was left and fed them to uh, God. The way that you can escalate Luca Blight in the, in the kind of crimes against humanity that he's been committing is to have him perform an ethnic cleansing. <laughs> Like, that's the only, that's the next natural progression, yeah. right? So, and that's exactly what's happening Level here. up the villainy. Yes. So, then we cut to a scene inside the city. Tension plays. Yes. It's Luca and Jowie. Luca Blight and Jowie Atreides, excuse me. We're on top of that hill. Yeah, they've climbed that hill <laughs> onto the top of Jowston Hill. That music is not playing. Luca says, ha, 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 ha. Look how beautiful it is watching their filthy souls sucked into oblivion. So, that answers the question about the fucking blue lights, right? Yeah. But the so, soul's filthy, or is he just, is he projecting the filth? He is projecting the filth, yes. Like, do these people have to be damned? Was it specifically a category of people that were vulnerable to soul sucking, or is this just anyone who was available? I believe that Luca Blight believes that all souls are filthy. Okay. His own included. Right. We could ask this question at any point during this conversation, but let's go ahead and ask it now, Eric. Yeah. Is sucking the souls of an entire town into oblivion a war crime? That is a war crime, but are they a war, or is this just a guy doing some shit? What do you mean? Are they a war? Like, is this is this a war involved action, or is this Luca's day off? They're occupying the city. Okay. And doing yeah, you're right. Cleansing. There are soldiers. That is so, a war crime. Hit it. It's a war crime. Do you want to offer a correction first? The uh, fake real net, the real fake net, real net voice in the previous episode. Yes, it made a critical error. Yes, it said that the uh, war crimes count was six. It was actually seven. So this is going to be number eight. Yeah, I'm going to hit it now. The so we call them two. Eight. Yeah, it definitely wasn't me who made that error in the editing process. It was the fake real net, real yeah. net announcer voice, like you said. Yeah, sorry, that episode's already already scheduled. We're not going to fix it. Nope. Jowie's got nothing to say to Luca. Yeah, is Jowie co-signing this, or he's like, fuck, dude, fuck, uh, oh, Jesus. That would be interesting if we got a, a, a sidebar with Jowie by himself, where he's like, oh, shit, what am I doing? We still don't know what kind of dark shit Jowie's been up to either. Like, when it faded out with him when he was with those Highland soldiers, then he yeah. walked home depressed. yeah. Like, so, so uh, Jowie may have done similar barbarism under the guise of altruism. I don't know. Under the guise of the Black Sword Rune? Yes. Maybe. Right. Because Black Sword Rune also doesn't sound like Bright Shield Rune. Ooh, hero shit. Black yeah. Sword Rune. Villain shit. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Luca turns to him and asks him, what's wrong? Don't you think it's beautiful? Dude. <laughs> then a line ha- occurs. There's a line. This is a line, Eric. It says, weren't you also born without the legitimate blood of your father? Question mark. It's like, I'm doing this because I'm a bastard. Is that the... Jowie asked an apt question. Why would you ask that? Yes, it's great. First of all, like Luca's not talking about himself. And we'll get more into that later. Like I thought maybe at first that Luca maybe had been Jon Snowed. Yeah, but Luca is li- also. Yeah, but Luca hasn't been Jon Snow. He's in line of succession for the throne, so he's not like talking about. But he's very obsessed with the idea of like pure blood and, and legitimacy, yeah, the purity, and he knows that he knows Jowie's background. So I think he wants Jowie to share in his anger at the world. It's like when you find someone who's really into your specific interest, but uh, Luca's interest happens to be like torturing animals and shit like that, and he senses that. And I mean, actually, he literally says. Because you interest me, your eyes are different from the eyes of those other pigs. Just below the surface, I see the darkness inside you. Surely you must feel it too. Yeah, he's trying to tap, he's like, he sees that and he's trying to tap into it. Whether it's there or not is, is completely under is is just L- like Lucas' perception. Somebody else has depression. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, yeah. I guess from Lucas' perspective, those like people born without legitimate blood have... Have their axe to grind out? Yeah, have some sort of duty to take revenge upon the world. Is this like Luca's o- opening gambit to, do you want to be friends? Like, look what I can do. Do you want to do this shit too? Yeah. Solange, you didn't want to do this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, because Luca's never really taken an interest, I don't think, in anybody, in anybody. Other than like to use them as a tool. Like he listens to people like, I guess, Kiba earlier in the game, right? Sort of. Like Kiba's there kind of as his handler, but yeah. he doesn't necessarily, I don't, I don't, I think he's. 
Kiba can pull the leash without Luca knowing. Them. Yeah, just, that, and then that's only because Kiba is tied to his father. Right. And his father's still in charge at this point in time. Jowie replies, but I'm grateful to my father for taking me in. So yeah, there's still a spark in his eye. Yeah. Jowie then walks off screen while Luca laughs. Sacrifice their souls, free the evil beast, cleanse this foul land. Eliminate even the toughest stains. Nice. Fade out. Back to our party. Sedition alternate plays, and we're out in that field. Everyone is out here, especially Miklatov, not believing this shit. Yeah, Miklatov has the only dialogue, which is what on earth? Yes. Great question. <laughs> what on earth is this goddamn thing? And then the world map music plays. Yeah, we're back. We're having right. a, hey, yeah, an adventure. Do, adventurous journey. Let's do it. And like, to me, I'm like, I'm not fucking going in there. Yeah. Are you serious? But, Miklatov, we're going home, dude. You just saw all you need to see. Yeah. Sedition alternate plays as we enter Muse. When I reach the town square, Miklatov says, It has been a while, but there are no signs of life. It is eerie because this town was extremely full of yeah. NPCs. And, and it's not like they're, it's not a town. Like later on in the game, you can go back to like those uh, Toto village and those ones that were burned down. Yeah, and there's new shit. And there's there's wreckage and stuff like it. Here, there's no wreckage. It's just empty. It's yeah. like it's literally been raptured. And you can't go inside buildings. They're blocked off. Yeah. We're not mm-hmm. blocked off, but just the doors don't work. It'd be funny if there was like just some guy in here that you could recruit. But yeah. Didn't get his soul sucked. Yeah, he was like immune to soul sucking or he was like under a, a, a wooden crate eating an apple. He had something. a pure heart like Goku. Yeah. So he didn't get go. sucked up. Yeah. Right. He had not sinned. He is without sin, does not get sucked. Soul sucked. As I head up that hill, a man stumbles down the stairs and collapses. The music stops. The man begs for help. Tension plays and a Highland soldier spills out, demanding we identify ourselves. And now I'm wondering, like, how are the Highland soldiers not marked for oblivion? Like, is that a technicality I shouldn't worry about? Like, how does this wolf decide who gets raptured in this general vicinity and who doesn't? Is there, like, a wolf pyre? Like, are they throwing people into the wolf pyre so that they get sucked? Oh, yeah, yeah. maybe. Well, maybe, or, you know, it, no, I'm sorry. You know what it actually was? What? They, it, they, the wolf pack did the too sweet thing oh. when it happened. <laughs> okay. And everyone who wasn't too sweeting got, got sucked up. All right. I'll take it, I guess. Miklasov says, fuck that. We get into battle against five guys, all of which we slaughter. Yeah. The unfa- Did you notice that when we got in the battle with the soldiers, they specifically rendered the statues in the background that flank the, the entrance to Jaston Hill? Oh, really? Like, it's not just that it, exactly. Yeah, it's not just a general town background. It was pretty neat. We get in more fights in Muse a bit later. I wonder if it was the same background. Afterward, the unfazed Highland soldier says, who the hell are these guys? Then they fuck off. Miklatov then asks that passed out dude if he's okay as sedition alternate resumes. My guy croaks out, monster, a silver monster, everyone eaten alive, my wife, my kids, father, mother, got them, everyone eaten alive. Miklatov assumes it's that bastard, Luca Blight, ding, and tells no one that he'll pay for this. Did you notice that when the dude died, he like faded out like a mad gear gang henchman? Well, like, like, like Yoda? Like blink, double dragon, like enemy that they blink out of existence when they die? I didn't notice that. Did he get soul sucked? Was it just like a residual sucking that happened where yeah. he wasn't all the way sucked off yet? I, I don't know. Because it's not like we have too many sprites on the screen or anything. There's yeah. only like six of them. Maybe that's just like the abstract for the character is dead. He turns to face me. Lord Rio, I'm heading back to Rock Axe. I'll send those Highlanders back to where they came from. I'm like, thanks dude. Yeah. You're going to also, I want to congratulate both of us for talking about Highland for 25 episodes now and not making a single Highlander reference about there can only be one shit. Oh, we haven't? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, if we have, let us know. Yes. And we're just going to leave this guy here. Are you sure that guy evaporated? Why did I make that note if he evaporated? Perhaps I didn't notice. Why did I write blinked out like Mad Gear Gang if he didn't evaporate? It's a good question. There's no way I would, would have written Mad Gear Gang. Mad Gear Gang plays. We escape the town, occasionally running into some soldier yeah, battles Yeah, more here. soldiers to kill. Uh, maybe another missed opportunity here for this to be a dungeon. Yeah, more a town dungeon, I guess. It, was it the same background with every fight? Do you remember? I think it was different than that one staged one. So, honestly, I think we could have seen all we needed to see from the distance without having to enter the city, but it's good that we got in here in Miklatov, who needs to see everything for himself. Yeah, I mean, like, at least he should have thought, like, the reason going here was to get some sort of evidence, but we're not leaving with any evidence. No, we just have our, our memories. They're... Leave only footprints. There is no evidence, actually, so. Then we go to the Muse Matilda border where those birds start chirping. The guard stops us, says he's glad to see Miklatov back safely. He also said after the incident, Lord Gerudo immediately ordered them to close the border. Mm. They were really worried. Miklatov says, thank you for your concern. And that's it. I speak to that guy again, and he says, people in the villages around here saw something frightening in Muse, and they were concerned. So I guess that was visible from far away. Yeah, it was like a... It got really cloudy over in the northern sky. Mushroom and cloud kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Do you think there's any like inspiration for 
when they were writing this this uh, entire scenario, do you think there's any inspiration for for the soul sucking ethnic cleansing thing? Do you think this is like, or, or was this just like, let's throw in? I mean, if you're checking off evil army, I think you got to do a genocide at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this like, is just kind of a it's it's a, scare the shit out of the kids way of doing them. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like every kind of villainous thing of this nature is inspired by like the Holocaust, or like a lot of times in Japanese culture, it's like inspired by the the, the, the atom bomb. bomb, the atom bomb. Yeah. But I mean, people were vaporized. Yeah. But I, I, I just don't, I can't think of any other examples of like in, in RPGs where there is such a, a mass destruction like that. Of, of people. So Coden also often resists the temptation to go metal as shit with any of its murder. Yeah, yeah. So this was kind of out of character for it too. I guess they did fuck the elves up though. Oh yeah, yeah. They the fucked, yeah, that's right. They burned yeah. them down to the ground. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it, I, your... I guess it just wasn't as pronounced because we didn't have the CG cutscene. We didn't have as much interaction like with the... The elves was worse because that was like racially motivated as yeah. opposed to wartime motivated. Yeah. Rock Axe? Yeah, let's hustle back. Prideful Sarabond plays. Mm-hmm. Nami seems surprised we made it back. Miklatov though is confident that Gerudo will understand what happened as soon as he's informed. I swear by my hands, Luca Blight will fall. Chris, yeah. is that true? Luca Blight will fall. By, I mean, by, by, are you, this knight is swearing, and a knight swearing is. Oh, by Miklatov's hands? Yes. Oh, well, I guess it's up to you if you put him in your party later mm. in the game. This makes me confident that will not happen. Yeah. <laughs> Nanami is certain that Matilda will join us now, which is like. I still think we're feeling right now like, oh, this is all going to come together, and the Matilda knights are going to yep, join us because. That's surely what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm hmm. Camus steps in to meet us when we enter the castle. He's glad that Miklatov is back and safe. He doesn't say fucking shit to me. Yeah. Miklatov briefly does. We met on the way and traveled together, but then he dismisses it and inquires about Gerudo. Excuse me, Lord Gerudo. Camus is ruffled by the shift in Miklatov's decorum, Chris. Did something happen? It's not like you to be so imperious. Imperious. What a word. Miklatov confirms that, Chris. Something happened. I only know fragments of the story, but those Highland dogs are doing something horrible. Camus wants to tone down that energy, son. Calm yourself. A knight should know how to control his temper. Chris, what are you more interested in, or what are knights more interested in? The rules or doing their job? Is that the eternal struggle with knight and swearing allegiances? I don't think the struggle is between the rules and doing their job because the rules are their job. I think it's more following the rules or doing the right thing. Do you have to say one of those things where you have to narrowly interpret the rules to do the thing that you want and make let's say, like the Bible where you can do anything? Are you talking about the Supreme? Kind of US, you're talking about the U.S. Supreme Court. I was talking about Warhammer Marines, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that that was the thought that I was going with. Yeah. Well, Camus is like. You need to calm down. Like, you need to find better... Listen, Dad needs something better than Soul Sucked for this invasion. You have to figure out something else to tell yeah. him about what happened. My man, my man, my man. Miklatov gets it. You don't understand. Out of my way, Camus. This emotion can't be controlled. Yes, which... I want to blurt that out next time I'm too emotional. This emotion cannot be controlled! Miklatov then Mikla fucks off up to the throne room. Camus is haughtily incensed. We have control and I head in there. Yep. A man named Gordo P- Ger- Gerudo plays. Yeah. Miklatov formally requests to take the army or even just the Blue Knight Squadron and invade Muse. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you can't beat that. No. What do you, what do you don't take the army into that? Did you see it? Gerudo can't believe this shit. Highland has no intention of fighting us, but you want to start a war with them? Miklatov explains that Highland sacrificed a shitload of people in Muse in nearby towns in a bizarre ritual. Quote, it was a massacre. We can't go on pretending not to see what's happening. What of our honor of knights? Yes. What o- of their honor? Our honor, their honor is only servitude towards their lord. I got a badge. Unfortunately. It's honorable. Mm-hmm. Gerudo, though, remains Gerudo. I don't know what you saw, but we knights have a responsibility to govern this land. We can't send its people in danger. Knights should never govern. Absolutely not. You can't make the cops the, the judge Mayor. dread. <laughs> yeah. Miklatov counters with the obvious. Luca Blight will come from Matilda once he's done with the other state cities. Gerudo steps off his damn ass throne, causing Miklatov to step back himself. Did he belly bump him? I think he like he may have chest bumped. Because remember, he belly bumped like Nanami out of the yes, way during that the... is his move to belly yeah. bump people. Yeah. Silence this massacre you're babbling about. Did you actually see it with your own eyes? Miklatov, for some reason, says no. Incites the refugees is the reason they have I to do this shit. I feel like Gerudo's just asking him for proof. Maybe in like maybe that's not coming through in the vocalization. Oh, yeah, He's like, no, I don't point. have proof. It's like, show me their shadows. Show me their shoes. Yeah. Did, did the shoes get raptured? That's what they should have bring, brought the shoes. Yeah. See, all, the, all these shoes. What I've gotten all these shoes if there are people to wear them. Yeah. Gerudo screams for Miklatov to shut up. He then cites Knight's Honor. Hmm. Chris, the sacred code of knights that I once learned from Lego sets. Knight's Honor. Yes. As Knight Captain, didn't you pledge to me by the emblem on your chest your undying loyalty? 
is breaking that pledge part of a knight's honor. Miklatov only dots for that. Then he comes back at the weak-ass response, I did swear to you by this emblem, but this is my true knight's honor. Oh. I think Gerudo then fires Miklatov. He says, if that's the way you want it, fine, now get out of my sight. Miklatov gets caught up in the life-shattering severity of breaking the rules. Breaking a pledge, breaking a pledge of loyalty is a knight's highest disgrace, but I am, but I am, I am the, I am human first and a knight second. Oh. I don't need your title. I resign myself to your disgrace. That's a fucking line. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, fuck yes. you. Yeah. Chris, what disgrace have you resigned yourself to? So sometimes before I go to bed, I have like a really bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, because toothpaste. Because I, 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 I tend to brush my teeth at like shortly after dinner because that's usually when I shower. Mm-hmm. So my evening brushing my teeth is, is, is that point in time. But, I, I, you know, I might have a snack or something yeah. like in the, in the early evening Twix, or something. yeah. Like, a, you know, a handful of goldfish crackers or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, oh, that shit's in my teeth now. And I already brushed my teeth. And yeah. also, Brooke's asleep and I don't want to wake her up and brush my teeth. So I chew a piece of gum. Ooh. So I chew a piece of gum to try to get the, the taste in my mouth and try to, you know, knock, yeah, knock some of those crumbs some, out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, just do do a little bit. You know, yeah. I've already brushed my, se- my teeth. I've I brushed my teeth step. twice a day. So this is like a two and a, you know. You go to breath, cheese breath. I go to bed. I'm still chewing the gum. Yeah. And then, because I want my breath to feel nice, yeah. and I want to get all the shit out of my teeth, yeah. like, as efficiently as I can. So where's that gum go? Underneath the bed? And so, I'll lay there and I'll read on my tablet. Like, I'll read some Marvel comics. Like, yes. I'm reading uh, Daredevil. Reading comics in bed as a 40-year-old man. I'm reading yeah. Daredevil as a 40-year-old man, chewing gum at Fuck the same yeah. time. Hell yeah, dude. Regression. And Infinite regression. And then I'm like, oh, shit. I'm, a, I'm, I need, I'm about to fall asleep. I don't want to lose this moment of about to fall asleep. And I need to get rid of this gum. You gotta capture it. So, I, cl- I can't wait to see where this goes. I close my tablet. Yeah. I lay it next to my pillow because there's enough room there. I won't roll on top of it. King really. size bed. Yeah. And then I take my gum and I put it on top of the tablet. Jesus fucking. And then in the morning, I get up and I take it off and I throw it in the trash. And I'm like, this is so disgraceful. Because there's like little, there's little pieces of dried gum on the front of my tablet and it's gross and I, I, I clean it off every now and then but I don't do this every night but like the, I've done it like for three nights in a row recently kill God go back to sleep <laughs> play the end music we're fucking out of here that's it that's where were we? I'm very sorry I asked <laughs> Miklatov goes on to say he can never forgive Gerudo for looking the other way he then removes and drops his what? his emblem his night emblem yeah, his badge. He takes it all. Like, there's actually a sound effect for that for him to ceremoniously do this. Yes, it's a nice little sound effect. And when it hits the ground, what does it do, Eric? Plays heart softening BGM two. It blinks out of existence like a bobo. That's right. Yeah, too many sprites. Heart softening BGM two plays, and Gerudo cannot believe the shit that his boy just broke his oath. Camus, full dipshit mode activated, wanders in and says his boy is just upset, and we should all let him cool off a bit. This undermines Miklatov's actions severely, and he should behead Camus right here and now. Yes. Gerudo no-sells all of this, then demands Camus arrest Miklatov and throw him in prison. Whoa. Camus says he can't do that, then turns to face Gerudo and also does what? The same goddamn animation. He drops his secret knife. Yes. Sacred knight emblem. Yes. I guess I'm going to break my oath too. I cannot obey. Camus then turns to me and I'm like, is it my turn to drop my yeah. knight emblem? Yeah. And requests that he and Miklatov join my army. We are no longer knights, but we still possess our hearts and our skill. Surely they will aid you. You know where their skills are, right? Killing. Engraved upon their souls. Oh, that's right. You're that's, right. That's where they are. Miklatov joined. Camus joined. It happens naturally in a second, but I really thought that they were going to start doing some Jerry Maguire shit, like, who's coming with me? <laughs> yeah. Miklatov is the Chimo star, the ferocious star. I don't really read him as a ferocious guy. He's definitely more of the uh, the war dog than Camus is. I think Ca- Camus is more dorm and, uh, decorum and process obsessed, whereas yeah. Miklatov is just like, he's transitioning to a likes to fight guy. Yeah, that's true. His weapon is a sword. He has the Dunsany 1, the Dunsany 2, and the Dunsany 3. Super fucking, I'm, I'm sh- glad the knights are this boring with their naming conventions as well. Yeah, he comes preloaded with a knight rune. If, Super boring. If Camus, no shit. He goes berserk if Camus runs out of HP. <laughs> really? Yeah. There are a couple characters that do that, like Nanami will with Rio, stuff like that. Uh, he can participate in the knight attack and the pretty boy attack, which is really called the fancy lad attack. I would seriously doubt that Miklatov has a scratch on him, but as a demonstration of his fighting prowess, because he doesn't, he's, he does not receive damage. 
Okay, yeah, true. In war battles, he's a support unit that provides one attack and zero defense and adds cavalry. Dude wears armor everywhere he goes and he has no defense. His wounded quote is, By my honor as a knight, I will be revenged. Revenge is a verb, nice. Revengeance. Yeah. Also on here, the knight doesn't have the K. Death quote, Wah! To die in this place. Investigation. Secret number one, age 26 from Rock Axe Castle. Rock, Rock Axe. Secret number two, this guy's got cavalry ability, so during a battle sequence, any unit you put him in will become a cavalry unit. He's the type of guy that says whatever's on his mind. That's why he doesn't fare too well in the ladies' department. The ladies' department. Eric. You must conceal your assholeness. Secret number four, he wakes up early in the morning and trains for two hours before breakfast. That's why his blue knights were such great fighters. Rise and grind. Poor guys. Suggestion box. It's just my opinion, but I don't think you should send women to die on the battlefield. It's just not right. Miklutov do that? I, 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 I don't see any ladies in the army here. Yeah, not very Or many. the knightdom, whatever. Cook-off introduction. To get to be this strong of a knight, do you suppose he eats a lot of raw steak? It's Miklatov! That translated accurately? Is that a sign of manliness, is to eat bloody-ass meat? I guess it is. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to go in and, and eat a well-done steak. Your, your boys will make fun of you. Yeah. There's a, a, wonder, a good citation is needed about the association between masculinity and animal meat. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Next is Camus. The, the romanization of his Japanese name is K-A-M-Y-U. Camus. He is the cheeky star, the strange star. He, of course, wields a sword. It is the Uriah 1, Uriah 2, or Uriah 3. Boring. He comes with the rage rune. He can participate in the knight attack and the fancy lad attack. He is a support unit that provides zero attack and one defense in war battles and also adds the cavalry ability. His wounded quote is, a knight must do more than fight. Retreat for now. His death quote is, damn. Damn. I never thought I would die like this. Fancy lad's very funny to me. Very cabin boy. I love fancy lads. Secret number one, age 27 from the Grasslands. Position cavalry captain. Secret number two, I heard that if he fights together with Mikletal, they can do a knight attack. Secret number three, he's originally from the Grasslands, but he moved to Matilda when he was young and took the test to become a knight. He and Mikletal became knights on the same day. That's cute. Secret number four, he's got rough manners, but he's a knight all the way. That guy's tough as nails. It's not really much. It's not a very good secret, Richmond. Come on. Suggestion box. Yeah, I, Richmond's kind of phoning in some of these. He's got four suggestions. God damn. I beg of you, please protect Miklatov. We are no longer knights, but we still possess our hearts and skills. Surely they will aid you. Luca Bly is a tough opponent. We're all going to have to be tougher. For the, knight, for the honor of the knighthood, we shall be victorious. All right. Cook off introduction. In between slicing up bad guys, this brave knight likes to eat Western food. It's Camus. Do you think Camus and Miklatov are the closest thing Soy Coden to Winks to toward a gay relationship? <sighs> Flick and Victor have the same room. Yeah, but they're more like, I picture them as more partners. Hetero life mates? Although Flick does reject most attempts at heterosexuality that are forced upon him. Yeah. Whereas Victor is disinterested completely. Yeah, that's true. Well, no, Annabelle. Right? Yeah. Knocking him back. So I think at this point in time, you're probably right. I Maybe think so. Colgan and Seed out there too. Like if yeah, Colgan <laughs> and Seed because they're they're bros to the end too. I just figure if you have to ship one person, these are the most the most obvious pair. Yeah, yeah, I agree. God damn. Gerudo calls us all traitors, then demands the remaining blue and red knights arrest everyone. Nobody does shit. The guards all hit Gerudo with dots while he looks around. The guards then step forward, requesting they follow Miklatov. A guard drops his emblem, then steps forward. Then all the motherfuckers in the building step forward and drop their emblems. Yeah, they're all throwing their shit down. It's a mass throwdown. Yeah, all flowing, throwing, blinging, evaporating. Their tactic is ineffective against Gerudo's rotting brain. You fools, so you've turned a handful of knights against me. What do you think that will accomplish? Miklatov no-sells that, apologizes, then pulls the ripcord. He says it's no longer safe to stay in this castle. Gerudo just goes behind his chair? What, to like hide? Yeah, he gets up and walks behind his chair like, is there a secret passage back there or something? Or did... Maybe he can't look upon the side of them and has to use the chair to oh. blockade his gaze. I don't know. So we step back into Rock Axe. Miklatov recommends we escape before Gerudo calls in his army, which I thought that was all your bros, but whatever. Camus says we should go. He'll try to headhunt some other knights, although I hate to counsel them toward treason. 
fucking rules, Chris. Camus leaves. Miklatov says we should escape through the Green Hill Zone. We're off to Green Hill Passage. Yes, we fade out to the forest. Nanami says that she is tired of constantly running away, which is something that we have been doing a lot in this video game. This is her, like, what, the Nan- Nanami running away tiredness count, like five? Yeah, I know. Yeah, there, there's like, at least. Like, can we just stop this shit? A blue knight comes running in all sweaty, saying that they're coming after us. Miklatov's like, oh, God, there's too many. Nanami says, yipes. It's okay, we'll try them somehow. Prepare for battle. But then she walks out of nowhere. Yeah. Hey. And says there's, that they're here to escort us back. Well, see, well, like earlier, they said they're coming after us. I don't think it was clear who was coming. I think they saw Shu's dudes and thought that someone else was coming after us. Or they think that the knights that are... Was Shu or the... the or the knights that are coming in a few seconds were coming after them. Oh. We're actually pursuers, but not joiners. The Nami bounces, thanks God, and says that now we'll stand a fighting chance. Shu says, I doubt you'll need us. Take a closer look at your pursuers. Then... It's Camus and the boys come marching on the screen. The red and blue guys. Yes, he apologizes for being late. Miklatov asks, what's up with all these people? Camus says, they share our disgust for Gerudo's methods. Is that what people say when they want to get their coach fired in like a fan group? We share disgust. For the coach's for the methods. Me- that's sports fans in general. Like <laughs> sports fan camaraderie is basically just sharing disgust. <laughs> That's how you bond with others is yeah. can, no one can believe the, good, the shit. The, the good times are fleeting. You have a, a couple of good years, but the rest is just like fucking hell. Mm. You know? Unless you're like a Patriots fan or something. Right. And if you're a Patriots fan, it's fine. Anyway, they share our disgust for Gerudo's methods. About half of both of the red and blue knights have decided to join us. My next note is I love sharing disgust. So I guess we have... There you go. Yeah. Shu approaches. You must be Lord Camus and Lord Miklatov. I am Shu, the Franz Army's strategists. Introductions are then made. Camus described himself as a now a common swordsman. He introduces himself. I'm no longer a knight. I'm a common swordsman because I've cashed in my chips. Like, dude, you have the exact same skills. None of this shit matters over here. Yeah, we don't care about pleasantries and, and, and rank. We have a pig farmer at the top of the castle. Yeah, I mean, we have dogs. Shu hurries home. He says that we can't evade the Green Hill Army much longer. I think that's a mistranslation or a mm-hmm. mixed quote. Because I, 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 don't, I don't think the Green Hill Army is, is coming after us. Now we're home. We're home. We're home. Music, a bustling town place. Yes, bustling town's the second town uh, yes. thing, and it seems like in my game it's coming and going. Like occasionally yeah. it'll be the other one. I don't know if it's a random uh, or I what. I don't know what's going on with yeah. the town theme. Yeah. I head into the war room and greet the old gang. When Anami says something insane, Woo, I feel sort of relieved to be back here. I guess it's because this is where I want to live. I, like at the castle, like home is where the heart is type thing. Does she have a citizen with no country? What I, are we? I think that's probably like a direct translation kind of thing where they didn't localize it. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. But like it, this, our castle is turning into a nice cozy town though. Mm-hmm. It is a bustling town. Yes. Nobody says anything to that. Shu says we failed to form an alliance with the Matilda Knights, but we have many new recruits. Shu also thinks the Highland Army is going to come for us soon. This is just a brief rest. Starting tomorrow, we'll have to fight again. Damn. Damn. Fade out. Comes back up and we're alone with the Nami, who seems to take in that we're living a life of endless violence. Yes, she's very exasperated about the idea of fighting again tomorrow. She also says Pilika probably missed us and we should go and check in with her. Yep. Crickets, and we have control. It's nighttime. I find Pilika alone in her room. The Nami parties out to greet Pilika, asking if she was a good girl. Pilika spins. Nami replies, hey, Rio. Pilika just wants one more time. Then Nanami stops, looks around, and says, Uh, um, no, good night, Rio. What's that? What's she, she hasn't done that in a while. She she did stuff like that early in the game when she was like, you know, when, when she was... Full of life? Well, no, when she, when she was become, beginning to become weary of all the running away and all the Do fighting. Do you mean Pilika or, or Nanami? Nanami. Okay. Because yeah. I, like, I saw Pilika spinning as like an improvement in her attitude. Oh. But what's Nanami talking about where... um. One more time. What is one more time? Oh, what is one more time? I think that Pilika just is kind of wants to be normal, maybe. Like, I don't know what the one more time is referring to, because I don't know what we've done with Pilika, but I think maybe maybe see Jowie one more time. I don't know. Because he trails off, uh, uh, no, um, good night. Yeah. I don't understand. This is this to me is like, put, uh, um, we'll localize yeah. it better later, and yeah. there's never a later. Yeah. Trendy retranslation cannot come out soon enough. Then where do we go next? Now it's time for a Highland camp scene, but actually it's a Highland castle scene. We're in a castle now. Yeah. The King's March plays? Reconnaissance Recon- I get Or King's March, they're very similar. Yeah, they're really similar. They both got that same, like, uh, drum, drum beat. Yeah. that in suspicion. We're inside a castle. Luca is facing off with Jowie. He says, hmm, an interesting idea, but what about the expeditionary force? Expeditionary force. Expeditionary force. What's that? Like a, a force on an expedition. Oh, got it. It's not as if the entire army is loyal to me. 
Particularly, Kiba and his son are more loyal to the king than me. It could even mean that the entire state strategy is in danger. Is this kind of Luca realizing he's too much of a psycho to really garner the support of the common man soldiers and just the ones that are afraid of him? Yeah, Luca, he's not completely... Like, he has some power of the science. He's obviously, he's bloodthirsty, but he also can... He, he, Knows what time it is, but he, he knows. What to, but he wants someone who is a competent and b loyal to him. which yes. none of these other captains apparently fits That's that true. criteria. Yes, and and and, and Jawi is kind of fulfilling that role for him there right now. And it seems. Luca doesn't know that Jawi has cut a deal with Seed and Colgan, right? Right. 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 Jawi said he's got a plan to handle that. Luca wonders how he got so wise. Jawi steps aside, and a man enters the room. It's fucking Leon Silverberg, the ultimate facts and logic lord, the man who masterminded the Kaliga incident in the Scarlet Moon Empire. Fucking Leon Silverberg. What's the Kaliga incident? It's where he... We talked about... Was that in the first game? Yeah. Okay. Remember it was the, the, the run downtown that Leon was standing I in? I remember him hanging out there yeah. and uh, Matthew running across the earth to say fuck you. It was a it. false flag operation to, to try to get the Scarlet Moon Empire to go back to war against, I believe, the city-states of Jalston. Mm. It's why Humphrey quit. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. They ransacked their own town and blamed it on Jouston. Anyway, Leon's here. How, how'd you feel I about didn't that? See that coming. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I need a third man entering the ring. Yeah. Uh, Leon says that's nothing. If I couldn't figure that much out, I'd be an embarrassment to the Silverberg family. Luca then does like a as you know kind of thing yeah. so that we can get people up to speed on who this fucker is. So you really were a strategist for the Scarlet Moon Empire along with Matthew Silverberg. Why are you here? I feel like Luca was meant to recognize and know him rather than say, say it the way he said it like yeah. he wanted to like say oh I respect you yes. rather than you know, no. Leon says that we are forgotten in times of peace it's only when war looms that people remember they exist I think he's talking about Silverbergs like whenever there's a war people call the Silverbergs because we are well learned in the, in the powers of the science Yeah, and they will call upon us it's kind of like do you have guys like I have an HVAC guy I have a plumbing guy I have a car guy that I yeah. know whenever I need their services I call upon them but I don't yes. think of them often that's true yeah you got a guy a, a, a painter guy a plumber guy you know. I am the painter guy oh yeah well I I won't paint Chris refuses to paint I refuse last, last thing I painted was like that wall right there nice good looking brown wall Chris yeah there's a couple streaks on there that aren't great but who cares brownstreaks.com <laughs> Lucas says hmm as you wish I will leave the rest to you my younger brother-in-law who 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 ha 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 so Jowie married his sister well or is this like a future thing so Jowie had explicitly asked for Julia Blight's hand in marriage during that last Highland camp thing did and he ask Julia or did he ask Luca he asked Luca yeah and Luca told him something he said something about his balls like you've yeah. got balls to, right. to do that my sister can have your balls but, and, uh, but apparently they've had an off screen conversation that has convinced Luca to allow this to happen mm. I don't think Julia has any say in this or any power right. in this so balls it, it's, confirmed it, it's all up to Jowie to convince Luca to this and apparently they have agreed to do so Jowie says nothing then stands side by side with Leon as Luca walks away and it fades to black a lot of this talk of the forces that are loyal to Luca and makes me wonder what sort of persona that Luca projects when he's in the public eye. Like, what do, what does the common Highlander think of Luca? Because they don't see the bloodthirsty side. Like, uh, we never get to see his charisma. I don't know. I feel like people kind of know that Luca's out of out of control, mad dog. People that's in the military, do, people in the military, yeah, that do, stuff but, filters down, right? I mean, we don't know if there's a printing press, if there's newspapers going around here, but I'm sure word travels. Like, we'll learn later that like. People saw what happened in Muse and they're freaked out like in Coronet or in different towns. Like you can yeah. talk to people about what they saw and they are disturbed. Those people are, but I'm talking about people that are on the other side of the border. Like what is the public? Like do you think he's like Gaston? The approval, ra- yeah. Well, what, what's his approval rating in, in the Highland country? People who aren't seeing what he's doing on the front lines. Are people often kind to the princes to like have high opinions of the son of the king in any kind of fiction? I don't know. It depends. Right? I guess we don't know enough, right? Yeah, There's not enough yeah. evidence for that. I don't know Highland if we ever did. Life. Yeah, I just, just wondered about that. I just know that the one time we saw Jillia, she was being pulled in a carriage in a town full of poor people. Yeah. And it's like, come on. HQ? We're back in our castle. Bustling town plays. Mm-hmm. I run into Nanami near my room. She hops and says, terrible news, terrible news. Great. Everyone's gathering in the square. And something I noticed, I noted it later, but like Nanami is really into repeating the same word twice. And I don't know if that's like a tick or like a personality trait. Oh, really? Trait. Interesting. It turns out the square is the war room where all the important people are indeed gathered. Yeah, I begin to call the people that hang out there the management team (laughs) or the leadership team. Because it's usually like, it's Shu. The ex-mayors. Yeah, Shu, Teresa, 
Fitcher's often there. Flick and Victor are usually there. I think that they're a little bit lower in the management chain now, yeah. the chain of command. We go in there and Sedition plays, right? Alternate, but it's the same song with a different intro. Yeah. Shu informs us that there is a report that the Highland Army seems to have appeared in Redat Town. Victor calls attention to the fact that the report says that they seem to have appeared there, and he wants to know if it's actually been occupied or not, so Victor doesn't trust the intel. Fitcher says a fucked up line, though. I know not, but if they can occupy it before we receive our next report, they are a formidable enemy indeed. Yeah, that's just a total <laughs> fucking <laughs> good... Fuck that's, that? that's babblefish right there. Like, I'm not... I mean, there it, it's a direct translation where yeah. without in, any touching it but i think what he's saying is so that i was like oh shit dude yeah yeah i think what he's saying is is that we we don't have time to wait for better intel yeah it's uh, shu also no sells that it isn't solanji that the third it's the third company in general kiba and his son yes yes care. i don't yeah I, don't, I guess we don't really know that solanji has been executed i mean we the yeah we the, we the 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 army so after victor says that should we go check things out shu gets incensed with an exclamation mark what are you saying victor you can't have lord rio do such a dangerous thing and i'm like do you know what I've been doing? Yeah, I was like, I, it, now you're bringing my leash in. Yeah, he's. I just went off to Soul Suck Town. I know. We See, can't. This, some, yeah. To me, part of that is evidence of like, Shu is the master manipulator. Maybe not entirely altruistic. If he like senses there could this could throw like the Muse soul sucking incident, N- Natilda recruiting couldn't throw a dentist plans. But whatever Shu's plans are, that for some reason is like no 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 you can't do that. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not saying that Shu is ultimately evil. I'm just saying, if I were making Shu an evil character, I would have him say arbitrarily weird restrictions at crucial times like this. Yeah. Victor's also maybe not ready to give up his slot as the main character of the story. No. <laughs> He's like, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta go. It'll be like a stroll in the park. Besides, Rio needs a break. Victor parties in as a bustling town resumes. He doesn't ask me for a party. So remember that Leona handles that and I go party up. Yeah, I bring... I didn't realize that like I was not even gonna need to use this party, so I like got everybody outfitted and everything. Oh but yeah, you went upgraded shit. I got Camus, Mik- Miklatov, Vicky, and Clive. You can kick Nanami out. Like she's she's in your party she to start with. She's begged to come this one on this one. She yeah, she'll be in your party by default, but you can kick her out. Okay, next I went straight to Radot, but you apparently did some cooking. Uh, yeah, I did some castle exploring here, and I happened to wander into the kitchen uh-huh. with Hayo, and Hayo was ready for another battle. He had been challenged by a chef named Shiki. Who does a he 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 right off the bat? Oh, he he guy. Yeah, he's one of those. He says, "What you want to battle me in a cooking contest too?" Says Hayo. Chicky says that if Hayo can beat him, he will give him the cake recipe. I love cake. I made some uh, red hot tomatoes, some deep fried fish, and a fish donut. Ugh. One you of my judges fouled the dinner. One of my judges was Muku Muku. Great. And remember when Choo Choo and Xenogears were sitting in the chair and he looked all tiny and cute? Yeah, yeah. Muku Muku looked like that. Good. It was great. They didn't resize it. Yes. So I won. I think I had to load some safe states. I'm not good at this at all. I keep fucking it up. But anyway, I win. Shiki tells Hayo that he cannot hide from the group. There's a poof. Is is the G capitalized in group? Yes. It's okay. Yes. Great. We'll, we'll come to find out later. It's the Black Dragon group, but they call themselves the group. These are all chefs. There's a violence sound. Okay. You know when a sprite gets hit and makes the... Yeah. Yeah. There's that and the fucking chef is gone. And everybody's like, what the fuck? That was poison. So the chef lost the battle and then popped a cyanide pill because he died because he lost he honor killed himself because he lost this chef battle oh okay so he poofed out of existence there was a good uh, poison rogue ninja battle in the original soy code right like during a feast didn't a ninja come in and yeah like an attempted murder this is good i'm glad there's more food poison yeah so, is what we're doing here you said if you lose one of these this will not continue right, right? is this essential for getting a destiny star do no. i have to okay it's no. just like a complete weird side submission yeah it's kind of like the clive thing where you oh okay yeah yeah. So then, then Hayo just spits dots. He's like, "I'm not going to tell you why. I just this this guy just killed himself because I, he I lost." I think you owe your leader why yeah. your opponent suicided after a cooking competition. I did a little bit more wandering after this, and this is when I noticed that Flick and Victor share a room now. And depending on if is it temporary, like what well, the castle gets bigger today. Well, what I think Victor says, "Why do I have to share a room with him?" If mm. if Flick is not in there, Victor will say, "I think I'm going to go have another drink." I did like at the mercenary fort. They both had their own rooms on opposite yeah. sides. Yeah. Also, we can notice that the blue and red knights have posted up in the barracks. So yeah. you'll have some of those blue and red knights walking around your your castle now, guarding various doors and whatnot. Yeah, I was going to say, they're, they're, they're very thick in the barrack area. Yes, yes. So we have to go to Radot next. And I'm kind of freaking out. Like, I don't remember how to walk there, but do you remember who we got? We got... We have Vicky. We have, the, yeah, don't we don't worry about walking to Radot Town anymore. Vicky's in my party, so I can't use her. <laughs> no, you can. When you walk up to where she is, she'll party out and you talk to her. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. I just assumed. 
I assumed otherwise. This game thought of that. Also, Verdat Town is not very far on the world map. I, I've, the world map is in a race. If I went to it before the Panzer Dragoon miniseries, I don't yeah. remember where it was. It's where we, it's where shoes from. Music. Her sigh plays. Yes. We stepped inside and the most important members of my entire force party out in front of the patrolling Highland soldiers. Yes. Victor realizes it's true. It's full of Highland soldiers and they seem to have taken over with almost no rioting. We get a choice. Let's go back or let's go inside. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. Let's do it. This pleases Victor. He says if it gets dangerous, we can leave it to him. I yeah. thought that Victor was going to pull me back out. Like he's going to pull my nuts out of the fire once again. No, he's but, into it. Yeah. He asks which way we should go. We party in and I have control. Yeah. There's a couple of NPCs you can talk to before you actually get the scene here. Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah. I did say anything interesting. There's like a stormtrooper there in the front and it says that if we don't hurry, we're going to miss General Kiva's speech so we know what's going on. There's another one that like maybe briefly recognizes us, but he thinks then he thinks it's only his imagination. He's like, hey, are you? Oh, no. No, surely the leader of the fake nuts army wouldn't be here. I went inside the inn. You can you can access the inn before you go down to that area. Yeah, did you take a nap? No, but I, there's one guy talking about how his body is a wreck. Okay, yeah, yeah. good, me. So another one wonders if they're going to suffer the same fate as Muse. So work. See, the soul-sucking thing yeah. is people yeah. know. Another one wonders, says that a gaudily dressed man just came up to him. He thinks he's looking for something. Godly? Godly. Okay, so not godly, godly. Godly, yes. So perhaps, uh, perhaps some sort of narcissist, I don't know. There's a employee, an employee that says the hostess says they, they should stay in a, in their normal routines during a time like this. That's right. Which I guess is Don't true. deviate from your routine. Carry on as normal. There's a girl upstairs that wonders how we could say that she's loafing off, but I don't think I said that she's loafing off, but she's loafing off. Loafers. Just loaf. Then we go down back on the town, go down a little bit further, and there's a bunch of commotion going on. There's a large crowd gathered around a bunch of orderly Highland troops that are lined up in about three rows or so. Reconnaissance mission plays. Yes, the King's March plays. <laughs> One of them play, I don't know. They are led by the red-caped General Kiba, who we've met before. His dickhead son Klaus is there too. Yes, it's our boy Klaus. Klaus says, we do the Klaus voice. First off, soldiers are blocking every exit. It doesn't look like the locals are here voluntarily. They have been rounded up, oh, in my opinion. Yeah, good good call. Klaus steps forward, does a 360, and declares... What was it? What kind of... It was like a haughty oh. leader. Listen, from today on, this town is under Highland rule. Anyone who steps out of line will be punished by Highland law. It's like a mixture of Rickman plus like some... Yeah. Some, uh, yeah. like, hunt. Uh, That's fine. You don't need to do it all every time. I just, I, I needed to hear the Claw's voice one more time. There's some rumbling about their lives. Then a man steps forward and says, the people of Muse were all devoured by a monster. Yeah, what the fuck? The crowd briefly erupts. Then Kiba steps up and says, nothing but silly rumors. I, Kiba, promise in the name of King Argaris, there is no such thing that has happened. The crowd erupts again. Someone says they're grateful. Another says it doesn't matter which army wins the war, which is some ultimate defeatist shit. Yeah, some some, some war like, weariness. It's like, dude, whoever, can I just go to work? Yeah. Please. It pans back up to us. Victor can't believe the smarm that was just on display. Yeah. He suggests we got what we needed and we can go back to HQ. Do you think Kiba was knowingly lying? I, no, I, I don't think Kiba knows. The like, I think, population. I think, How do these citizens know when he hasn't heard? I think is he too insulated? I think Luca sent, th- sent them here to try to get him far away from Muse so that he could do that so that Kiba wouldn't turn him into the king. Yeah, but the people here know. Surely he has heard rumors at this point. He doesn't believe it, though. Oh. Like, remember when... Remember when, when the ne- peasants don't know shit. Remember when Neck Lord was, you know, sucking souls or whatever yeah. and everybody was talking about a monster? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Especially without, like, fact-checking. This is a world of monsters, too, so... We turn to leave, but Klaus seems to notice us. The clearly marked rogue army member standing away from the crowd in broad daylight. Victor asks if he spotted me, and we get a choice. Let's run away, or what? What did you choose? I said what? I said what? Yeah. Victor gets frazzled. If you run away, I think that you missed the rest of the scene. Oh, really? I think. You just eliminated it? Yeah. Klaus then steps up. So we meet again, Lord Rio. It's too bad, but Lord Jowie isn't here. He's at our capital. Chris, how do you say that word? You took French. La Renouille. All right. La Renouille. French fake Ned, how about you give us that a shot? Le renewal. Création de faux filet. Je le dis comme l'apostrophe renouille. I believe that I what read believe, somewhere that the localizers said that they just it's not a real word, they just made up a French sounding word. Well the French fake Ned just said it, so it sounded French to me. Okay. The wedding between him and Julia Blight should be taking place right about now. The Funk Soul Brother. Check it out now, the Funk Soul Brother. Yeah. Lord Rio, you defeated I'm just like this this is the first time they're learning that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lord Rio, you defeated me at Two River, but next time I'll be ready. Well, excuse me for now. We're also busy preparing for a battle, you know. Klaus respects the game, but the game is not a game. It's not. It's for real. It's but he's he, but he he's very much one of those strategists who who treats everything as like he's playing 
on a chessboard. Seem to be one. I also appreciate when battle leaders meet each other under common settings, like not oh, in yeah. the battle. Yeah. To like shit talk before the battle. There's a, a very famous set of Gundam episodes where Amuro Ray meets Ramba Rawl in like a small like cantina and they're both like opposing mech pilots and they gain respect for one another. It's kind of the plot of heat too. Yeah. What is stopping Victor from putting a sword through Klaus's like neck skin here? Like, yeah, because Victor, Victor, Victor has no honor. Yeah. Like, he doesn't give a <laughs> shit about that. He's, like why doesn't that happen? Why, like I thought that specifically was why Victor is here. I thought Victor like right now is going to off Klaus and piss off Kiba into attacking us. That actually m- might have been a good strategy. <laughs> Just have Shu with the army waiting right outside. Yeah. Like that to me seemed like a strategic move. Yeah. Victor confirms we're fighting Klaus and Kiba, but not Jawi. He suggests we head back as these guys mean business. And I'm like, do I have to really walk all the way back? Shit. Yeah, we don't have a blinking mirror. But Chris, that battle has to happen, but not on this episode. It'll happen on the next episode of Retro Made Amgresia. Yes, of course. But before we do that, we'll consult the real net. Initializing real net. All right. Eric Vernon says, knights are cops, not ninjas. It's true. That's why they can't sneak. Yeah, ninjas kind of border i guess there are true i don't know ninjas to me seem more of like a ronin type deal like solo actors as opposed to like packs of decorum and order but like also heavily disciplined uh, yeah i think maybe ninjas are made ninjas are mercenaries yeah kind of i don't know i don't know enough about real ninjas wonky shark says sucking souls is capitalism yeah yes Eric Vanine points out that Tyr had the Soul Eater in the first in the first game. Every time we killed a bad guy with him, it, was that a war crime? Eternal damnation. Sucking souls. I mean, Tyr never attacked without being attacked first. Tyr's right? a war criminal. Cal L says Jawi accidentally joined the after school genocide club. Turning, Tur- point? Turning point. Turning USA. Point. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Eric Vanine says it's always terrible when you're not all the way sucked off. <laughs> yeah. You went to, to completion ideally. Eric Vanine says Supreme Court Warhammer Marine same thing. <laughs> 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 they both live way too long that was <laughs> that was when, when our ideas did not align properly but it, it it made for a good bit i think in my head i remember playing warhammer 40k space marine when i thought of that and then some they're having an argument and someone went you interpret the codex so narrowly brother yeah <laughs> eric pronounces i think resign to your disgrace is a play on resign and disgrace he's resigning but gerudo's actions are disgraceful yeah, I mean, that's what it pursued, too. I just wanted to ask Chris a question about disgrace. And he delivered. That was the most satisfying answer. Yeah, a, lot, was, of pe- yeah, a lot of people you've, are... All- you've told me you're, you're fucked up, fucking... I mean, I, I'm sure I have something on that level, but... Yeah, some people are telling me that, that should, we should have increased the, the war, war crime <laughs> the war count. <laughs> count. I don't know what the context of this comment was, but I'm going to read it anyway because it's funny. Grace Wandier says, Renee Zellweger joins the party. Jerry Maguire. Oh, yeah. She, she's on the oh, the left. Yeah. Got it. Good job. Instead of gum, why don't you get those like little slips of like plastic that you eat that are mint flavored that dissolve in your mouth? Well, that wouldn't dislodge the yeah, cheese at it, cubes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Be... God, I haven't had gum in years. I should have gum. Let's chew gum on the podcast. No. Some big league chew. We'll just take another slab of it every time and get this big mouthful. John Doe says, Nanami is tired of running because she knows our party can single handedly kill everyone and she wants to beat ass. Kalil says that Eric's collection of guys intimidates him. Like your guys, your HVAC guy, your this guy, your that guy. I mean, ideally that I summon them all at the same time and fix everything and like form the Voltron of, of guys. Because they're all, all my collection of guys are not the cheapest guys, but they are the best guys. Yeah. And you want it done right. All right. Thank you, RealNet, for joining us tonight. This episode is a production of Retrograde Amnesia, recorded on February 2nd, 2023. Find us on Twitter at Retro Amnesia Pod. Email at podcast, podcast at retrogradeamnesia.com. And, you know, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash retroam and listen to all of our bonus episodes. There's lots of them. Like many, many, many of them. Go there and see. Thanks, Mark. For Shepard. You're welcome, Chris. Until next time, Eric. Yes, we will execute Klaus. And now you may go back to sleep. Hide the details for me. No, I mean, it, I'm, I'm, it, it's the same as the wing stuff. It's just mm. you have you you eat a progressively hotter pickle, and I order. Oh, I see. Yeah, and um, and you try to you you try to run the gauntlet, but I got some real like 
hazardous shit mm. <laughs> coming. Pro shit. Yeah, I ordered it all from that uh, the same place that we ate from the other night, the uh, Pops Pepper Palette Patch the place at the um. Yeah, yeah. So how do you uh, feel about the hentai sticker? Chris, you got a date with my wife next week? Yeah, I do. We're gonna we're gonna run a run a couple laughs. Uh, There's people that that recognize our our wrestling references and think we watch wrestling, but we haven't watched wrestling in like all of our years. references 20... are from the 90s. Yes, yes. <laughs> like I want to be clear about that. I have not watched wrestling in 25 years. I would, but you know, it's so much content per week. Yeah, I'm not there's doing that. Yeah, yeah. No fucking way. I got anime on Twitter. I've got anime to watch. Is breaking that part? Is breaking that pet? Chris, thank you for sharing that with me. I don't have anything that fucked up in my entire life to share with you. <laughs> uh, Chris just exposed his weirdest habit. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to tell anybody else about that because I don't want their opinion of you to fall any further than it already has. Yeah. Um, but gum on the tablet. I see the utility of that. I can appreciate the utility. It, it's on the tablet cover, not on the screen. There's a cover. You close it. That's that. That's even worse because the tablet screen can be cleaned. The cover the the gum the the saliva is going to saturate into the cover. I will yeah. never touch your tablet. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Secret number three. He's the type of guy that says what that. <laughs> Fuck you if you're no. I mean, I know a lot of people that are Patriots fans that are like a lot. It's not their fault. Miklatov confirms that. Why did I write your name here? This gentleman is the first female ninja robot. I have named her Nightbird. Magnificent. Tremendous. Unbelievable. Very impressive. Bravo. What is a ninja? An ancient Japanese warrior. Uh, there's a there's a lady in the back that says the hostess that... What the fuck did I write here? I don't know. I can't see your notes. Oh. Playtime! 